Greetings friends. Today I'm going to give you a brief retelling of the plot of the sci-fi drama Downsizing. And so here we go. The action of the movie begins in the Edwardsen Institute, located in Norway. In his rather large laboratory works a scientist named Abjorsen. The man dissects a rat and places the subject in a complex apparatus. Opening the device, Abjorsen can't believe his eyes. In deep shock and excitement, the scientist runs around the institute and informs his friend Andreas that they have succeeded. The action moves five years into the future to the capital of Turkey. The same Andreas, the director of the institute, speaks at a large conference. The hero tells that most scientists consider overpopulation to be one of the main dangers to humanity. Andreas says that one of the ideas to solve this problem may be realizable. Opening the box, he introduces the audience to a downsized Dr. Abjorsen. A tiny scientist tells through a microphone that he and his colleagues have developed a way to reduce matter 2,000 times. Abjorsen talks about their tiny community, which soon appears on stage. Scientists say this is the best way to solve the problem of overpopulation. Residents of all countries are shocked by this research and the very possibility of reduction, including American Paul Safranek. Ten years later, the controversy and interest around the shrinking size of humans continues unabated. Paul and his wife are working hard, but the economy of the states is collapsing because of the increase in the number of short people. Together with Audrey, the hero comes to the reunion and sees that one of his friends has shrunk. Dave tells Paul that people are shrinking not to save the planet, but to get rid of debts to start life anew, and also colorfully tells about Caithaville, an ideal city for small people. After pondering their situation, the Safranek family heads to the very elite town to find out more about everything. The manager tells them that, given their current income, Paul and Audrey will be millionaires in Caithaville. The family agrees and starts selling their possessions to dive into their new life sooner rather than later. Family and friends come to Paul and his wife's house for a party, Audrey talks to her father about reducing her body size. In the evening at the bar, a man attaches himself to the heroes, arguing that little people shouldn't have rights because they pay less taxes, but Paul's friend chases him away. Back at the empty house, the couple feels slightly uncomfortable as they await the procedure. Audrey and Paul spend almost the entire next day driving to the Human Reduction Center. On the bus next to them are people who have already become tiny. Finally the couple gets there and begins to go through the registration process. They are once again warned that the procedure is irreversible and asked if they agree to the reduction in body size. Paul and Audrey wait their turn and learn that they will be separated for five hours because the procedure will be done in different wards. The couple hug and are separated. Before the procedure, Paul and the other men have all their hair removed, he is given an injection and taken to a ward where dentists remove dental crowns. Finally Paul, along with the rest of the men, is placed in the apparatus. After a short period of time, the transformation takes place, and the shrunken heroes are carefully collected from the table to be transported to the wards. Upon waking up, Paul sees a nurse informing him that the hero is already in Caithaville. The man asks the staff member if his wife Audrey has already been brought in, and she promises to find out. The nurse brings Paul a phone in which he hears the voice of his companion. Audrey asks her husband not to be angry, she tells him that when they started shaving her, the woman remembered her family and friends and decided to abandon the procedure. The heroine doesn't want to go back and is about to leave Paul. The upset man quarrels with Audrey and leaves the hospital to start a new life. A traveling companion gives the hero a tour, but Paul is too upset by the quarrel with his wife to enjoy the new reality. The hero receives the keys to his mansion, which in addition to its size amazes with its furnishings and rich decoration. However, all this does not touch Paul and he, having showered and changed his clothes, watches the news. On TV they tell about tiny immigrants who entered the United States in a TV box. Almost all of them have passed away, except for one woman who ended up in a Caithoville hospital. It turns out that Knott was forcibly reduced because of her political views. After a year, Paul moves out of the mansion into an apartment and signs divorce papers with Audrey. The hero works in a call center and after a day of work heads to his friend Dave. The man wonders why Paul is so discouraged, and when he finds out that it's all about the breakup with Audrey, he suggests that he just find a shorty. 
In the evening, Paul invites a friend over for dinner and discusses with her the big people who are not at all kind to the diminutive. Kristen blames those who haven't shrunk for the impending global warming, but suddenly the character's conversation is interrupted by the noise of music. Paul explains that it is Dushan who is throwing party after party and asks the man to reduce the music. At the door of the apartment appears the neighbor himself, who asks not to be offended by him and insistently invites Paul to his place. The hero refuses and sees his girlfriend off, who says that she is not yet ready for something serious. Together with the Rose Paul goes up to Dushan and the latter calls him a friend and introduces him to Conrad, the captain and owner of a wonderful boat. At the party, the hero meets baby Ronnie, the firstborn shorty, and is photographed with the star. Paul takes a strange pill, kissing a girl, and the rest of the party he has fun and partying to the full. In the morning, the hero wakes up under the table, surrounded by the consequences of sobbed the Nobo temporary insanity. While having breakfast with Dushan, Paul talks about the first colony of short people in Norway and his dream to visit it. In response, the party organizer says that he flies there a couple of times a year. Dushan says that big people are becoming small in order to have what used to belong only to the rich. Therefore, the man organized a business selling luxury goods to small people. Noticing a lame girl among Dushan's cleaners, Paul apologizes and follows her. The immigrant learns the names of medicines from the hero in a broken language and takes them, saying that Dushan allows her to take them. Paul, who worked as a doctor, says that he can help the girl to cope with her illness and suddenly recognizes in her the same knock, a woman who escaped from Vietnam. Dushan is amazed that, with such abilities, the hero works as an answering machine. Paul explains to Nock that her knee and hip need to be operated on, but for now he can only explain to the girl how to walk properly. However, the girl asks the hero to go to her house to help her sick friend. By bus, Nock and Paul go through a tunnel and find themselves in a poor village outside the walls of Kaufoville. The hero gets off the bus and enters a huge dormitory for poor short people. Nock takes him to his tiny room, where Gladys, his sick friend, is staying. It turns out that the woman has stomach cancer, the heroes give her a strong anesthetic. Nock asks Paul to come back in a few days to examine and repair her prosthesis. At work, the hero feels out of place. When he arrives at Nock's house, he learns that her friend Gladys is no longer alive, but she is not sad and asks Paul to examine her prosthesis. While the hero is fixing it, Nock prepares tea for him and asks him to hurry up, because she has a lot of things to do. The girl tells him that she was arrested when she protested against the construction of a dam on the site of many villages, and her sister is gone. From the girl's horrible stories, Paul accidentally breaks the prosthesis, but promises Nock that they will definitely find a new one. While the girl can't move, the heroes do Nock's work, cleaning various rich houses. Nock is given a lot of expired food, and the heroes take it to the slums, where they share it with those who can't work. Paul examines the sick refugees and tries to help them. Afterwards, together with Nock, the hero goes to the church and observes the deprived but joyful people. Two weeks later, Dushan is openly amused to see Paul among the cleaners of his apartment. He explains that he is helping Nock until the new prosthesis is ready. Dushan allows the girl to take all the food from the fridge, because she and Conrad are leaving soon for the first colony in Norway with a very important cargo and they want to take Paul with them. Then Nock says that she is flying with them, because the hero must help her. The girl says that when she got to the hospital, Abjorsen himself wrote to her and regretted that the heroine had to suffer because of his invention. In addition, he called Nock to visit at any time, but she could not get away because of the pile of work. On the ship, the four heroes are sailing through the Norwegian fjords with a cargo. Paul sees Nock genuinely enjoying nature and the world around her. Abhorsen arrives on the ship. The scientist tells everyone that the world is on the verge of ecological catastrophe, and soon all this beauty and splendor will disappear. Abjorsen says that together with other scientists he has long studied the problem of methane emissions in Antarctica, but they unanimously came to the conclusion that the human world will come to a crushing end. In the evening, Nock and Paul discuss the imminent end of the world. In the cabin, the hero examines the girl's leg and gives her a massage to relieve the pain. On a touching impulse, Paul kisses Nock and apologizes, but she stops him saying that she wanted to do the same. The next day, the ship reaches the first Norwegian settlement. 
Wonderful nature, rocks, landscape and views, everything impresses the heroes, even those who have already been here. Paul notices that there is no net over the settlement and it is surrounded by nature. Abjorsen explains that the other living creatures are not that interested in short people and there is no point in hiding from them. The inhabitants of the first settlement gladly welcome the scientist and Dushan. Sally, the head of the short people, shows Paul and Nock a tunnel leading to a dungeon where Abjorsen hopes to wait out the catastrophe and revive humanity again. The place is amazingly equipped, with fields, livestock, and wood, all to survive for a long period of time until conditions on Earth stabilize. Over dinner, Abjorsen gives a speech in which he praises humanity and says that it is too beautiful to disappear forever. After dinner, Paul says that he wants to stay in the bunker to help the future humanity and asks Nock to stay with him, but the girl is adamantly opposed. Dusan and Conrad also try to dissuade the hero, explaining that there is a kind of cult in front of him. But Paul does not heed them and wants to join Abjorsen's team. In the morning, Nock comes to the hero and asks why then they were close on the boat, if the relationship means nothing. At sunset, the group traveling to the bunker sees the sun for the last time and says goodbye. At night Paul sees Dusan, Conrad and Nock. At parting, the girl gives the hero a Bible in Vietnamese as a souvenir. When Paul enters the tunnel, his friends wait with hope that perhaps he will change his mind and return to them. Stopping in the passage, the hero realizes that real life and the benefit of living people is more important to him than the illusory salvation of mankind. Paul runs back and embraces Nock, and the entrance to the tunnel of short people is blocked with stones. The heroes return home after leaving beautiful Norway. Paul and Nock continue to help people from a poor neighborhood. This is the end of the movie. Thank you all for watching this video to the end. Give this video a like. Write in the comments what you think about this movie, and see you in new videos.